What exactly are we talking about when we say it is going to be an El Nino event? Or how would you explain what is El Nino? I think that the first thing you have to do is you have to sort of visualize what's normal across the Pacific Ocean. Okay, so it's the tropics from the equator, right? It's getting a bunch of sun. So you expect everything to be warm. You expect all that ocean water to be warm along the equator across the whole Pacific Ocean because it's getting all that direct sunlight. What's actually normal is that we've got easterly winds that push across. They go all the way around the world at the equator. But if you think about this big open expanse, the whole Pacific Basin, they're subjected to easterly winds all the time. So what ends up happening is you get this flow of um, water away from the South American coast towards the west. So you get upwelling. So you get actually cooler temperatures in the East Pacific, warmer temperatures in the far west Pacific. So that's what's actually normal. Um, there's a basically a magic number in the temperature of the ocean that produces thunderstorms. So above about 27 and a half, 28 degrees Celsius, you get tropical thunderstorms, and below that, you don't. And so you can envision that if there's cool water in the East Pacific, warm water in the West Pacific, all the storms are actually in the West Pacific, which is what you normally see. That, in its own right, is kind of interesting, and all that rising air has to go somewhere. And so you actually get a circulation, like we talk about the Hadley cell circulation, which is rising air at the equator, and it spreads out, and it sinks about 30 degrees north and south latitude, and that sinking air is drying, and that's where all the world's great deserts are, is about the subtropical latitude. Well, this circulation from east to west actually has its own circulation, so rising air in the West Pacific, sinking air in the East Pacific is called the Walker circulation, right? So that's normal. So gosh, that was a long setup to just like, what is El Nino? (laughs) So El Nino is when this sort of breaks down in one way. So La Nina is, we won't even talk about today, I'm just gonna go right to El Nino. Again, think about this, what you'd expect to see is warm water along the equator across the whole Pacific Basin. Easterlies are pushing warm water to the west and cooler water's upwelling in the East Pacific. During an El Nino, the easterlies break down a little bit. So if the easterlies slow down at all, you don't have that upwelling. You start to have warm water in areas, the East and Central Pacific, that you don't normally have it there. So if that water is now warmer than it is and it crosses this magic threshold of you know, 27F, 28 degrees, you start to have thunderstorms in areas you don't normally, right? And so that's the key. Is that's why we talk about this Nino 3.4, this weird little box in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's because we want to know if it's going to get warm enough to make thunderstorms in that area. And if it does make thunderstorms in that area, when those thunderstorms shift around, the walker circulation changes, and that has implications for the jet stream in both the northern and southern hemisphere. And so in the wintertime, that movement of thunderstorm activity, that disruption of the walker circulation, typically will enhance the subtropical jet. That's when you get into these El Nino situations, is that subtle shift in temperature, storm activity in the middle of the Pacific can create a subtropical jet that could you know, give us a, a whole new handful of storms that we don't normally see here in the southwest. So 